Welcome back. So we're going to start some videos here that talk about firewall rules and some of the videos will get in depth. This first video I want to take just a minute and talk about something that has sparked a lot of controversy because of the way it's handled and that is auto firewall rules with port forwarding. And I may have mentioned this in another video but we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, log in and the edge router that we're using let's talk about let's talk about um, how to set a firewall up I recommend until you're proficient with setting up firewalls I recommend that you use the quick start guide you get into the device you upgrade the operating system and I always suggest that you use a setup wizard until you've labbed it out and, and you understand the rules and things like that because a misconfiguration of a firewall can cause you many, many more problems than what you could expect. But anyway, we're going to log in and let's go over to the firewall NAT tab. Okay, and we're going to look at port forwarding. And if you've seen any of the videos that I did like how to port forward the NVR ports or the Unify ports, you're familiar with this. So we're going to click Show Advanced Options, <clears throat> and what I want to talk about is first we would select our WAN interface, which I've I've changed the configuration on this since the last video, but it would still be ETH zero for my WAN interface. Hairpin will leave that on. You know I'm not a huge fan of that, but in some circumstances we can't can't avoid it. But the next thing that kind of causes controversy is this auto firewall rule. And the reason it causes controversy is because of how it interacts with your system. Now, I will tell you this. If you are going to do port forwarding, we'll add a, a LAN interface and we'll say it's... Uh, Bridge zero in this case. Oop. East zero. Bridge zero. We'll show that advanced option. So if we're going to do port forwarding, we will we'll put a forwarding rule in here, just as an example. Okay, so we're going to do port 80, and it's going to be TCP so this is assuming that we have a web browser and where do we want to forward it to so with the port forwarding this this wizard or this isn't a wizard but this tab is doing all of the heavy lifting for you you literally need to know nothing about firewall rules nothing about uh, NAT statements nothing I mean it does it all for you and that is part of the problem and why it sparks controversy and, and let me show you. So we're going to do port 80, which is, uh, you know, standard HTTP. And there's no other host inside here, so we're just going to make one up. And we still want it to be port 80, and we're just going to call it web server. And you'll notice that we have this auto firewall checked. Now, here's why we do that. Because if you don't have this checked when you're using port forwarding, then you have to go in, create the firewall policies, and let's look at what happens. At this point, from whatever my WAN IP address is, I am forwarding port 80. It is now effective. It is working. If 1.2 is alive on the inside of this router, I am now forwarding port 80 to it. Here's part of the, the issue from the, the GUI side of it. We come over to firewall policies. And we look at the policies that are here. Okay, that's default from a wizard. That's default from a wizard. So where is where is the, the firewall rule that allows port 80 to come through? It's not here. Because this wizard doesn't put those policies here where you can see them. Let's go to NAT. So the only thing that we can see here is we're masquerading. So there's no DNAT, destination NAT rule. I mean, this is all out of the box from, from the wizard. But somehow, magically, automatic, 
auto-magically, I love that word by the way, we are forwarding port 80. So let's open up the CLI. And we'll look at the configuration. So let's see. Scroll down here. You having fun looking at this? I I love the command line, but I'll tell you that Ubiquity's done such a great job with the GUI that I mean it's leaps and bounds ahead of every other vendor. All right, so port forwarding. Look at this. Auto firewall enable. So rule one is forward to its description web server address 192.168.1.2 port 80. Original port is 80. Protocol TCP WAN, uh, WAN interface is ETH0. And that's it. And you see our standard masquerading rules and things like that. So the auto firewall does some things a little differently, and it, and it sparks it sparks some controversy. Uh, I definitely think that port forwarding has its place. So if I'm just a small shop and I've got something behind this, and I just need to allow the entire world to get to it, and I'm you know, I'm not concerned with locking down where that traffic's coming from. This this will work. Is it ideal? Maybe for some people. It just depends on your comfort level. I'm not going to tell you that this is right, and I'm not going to tell you that it's wrong. I'm going to tell you that it has its place, just like manually configuring the policies in the NAT. So in the next video that's coming up, we're actually going to look at the firewall policies and the NAT. If you peruse my videos, you'll see that there's a firewall NAT group video out there that kind of explains what they are and that was pre-talking before I invested in the mic. My DNAT and SNAT videos are also out there but we will revisit that and so you can hear me articulate about those. And of course we will talk about the firewall policy. So those videos uh, will be coming probably tomorrow. So if you like the video please give a thumbs up, please comment, please share, please subscribe. And we will see you at the next video.